Hello. Education in the 21st century has changed in many ways and by and large these changes are due to the availability of a gigantic pool of educational resources on the web. As one of my colleagues put it, the knowledge is now on the web and no longer just in the teacher's mind. Today we have a new generation of students requiring a different model of higher education. So as often predicted, the future is already here. And one element of today's educational scenarios where students are autonomous learners is digital content. In the case of the Virtual Linguistics Campus, students are given the content by means of multimodal e-learning units combining highly interactive multimedia content with instructional video and flanking materials such as digital texts. Our students can access the content as often as they like and from wherever they like. They can examine the multimedial virtual sessions with almost no limit. They can watch the e-lectures on their mobile devices and use the e-lecture board content that was created during the recording of these e-lectures. And if they want to, they can obtain a workbook and supply the gaps in the workbook with the missing information. Using such digital materials, various course formats can emerge. Let us look at them in the following. A simple format is the inverted classroom that flips the basic activities of teaching and learning. The inverted classroom scenario is offered to on-campus students. It provides an in-class phase after the phase of content acquisition but does not need an elaborate e-learning platform. It is integrated into the university curriculum and of course you can get credits in such a course. If a mastery component is added, a platform is required to administer student progress. The mastery tests themselves are formative in character since the test results determine what has to be done in class. Do we need reteaching or not? A special format of digital teaching offers two courses in one. That is, you have two different online courses but one common in class phase for both, plus additional online exercises to compensate for that. This is why I fainted out phase two over here. Let's look at a theoretical example. Two courses, course A and course B, with different digital content. And then we have alternating in class phases, course A in week one, course two in week two, course A in week three, and so on and so forth. So we can serve two groups of students, in this case course A and course B, with different digital content and practice with them in class either together or in alternating order. In an online course, which is no longer restricted to the campus but requires the physical presence at one point in time, in particular for exams, testing becomes summative because there are no in-class phases which you can redirect anymore. By the way, this might change pretty soon on the Virtual Linguistics campus because we are working on adaptive testing methods that determine the type of additional digital material to be given online. If an online course is opened to anyone, it can no longer be certified by a university. So we have to get rid of that logo over here. Because in order to gain credits, you have to officially enroll. And this runs counter to the openness concept. By the way, in open online courses, we need a forum. Individual feedback is no longer advisable, rather the in-class participants should solve their problems on their own. The same applies to MOOCs, the massive 
open online courses. No credits, no feedback, but a forum. Additionally, we need a very specific platform that can handle large or massive numbers of participants. The platform has to collect test data. The platform has to automatically distribute statements of participation, statements of accomplishment, etc. So MOOCs are nothing else but massive, open, inverted classroom classes without credits and without in-class activities. And this allows us to use MOOCs in an on-campus fashion. With an additional in-class phase, which also involves digital practicing material, and the physical presence of our students, which means they have to officially enroll, we can return to formative assessments, replacing the summative ones. However, we're losing the label open, so this has to disappear. As a result, we get an IMOC, an inverted massive on-campus class, a class that requires digital teaching materials and combines the MOOC principles, that is, no tuition but peer-to-peer -peer discussions via a forum, with those of the inverted classroom mastery model, formative testing and in-class meetings as practicals. Such classes can now serve hundreds, if not thousands, of students. And if you don't have a lecture hall that is large enough for your audience, just split the class into subgroups in accordance with the two-in-one concept. So, with MOOCs, we serve the world, and with IMOCs, our own campus students, especially if they come in large groups. That both concepts work very well has been shown on the Virtual Linguistics campus several times. Our MOOCs on linguistics have served thousands of students from all over the world and our IMOCs have been integrated into our curriculum and have been used several times on campus. Thanks for your attention.